amazing thing. Peter, uh, he was the, the principal speaker in the first uh, 12 chapters of, of the book of Acts, and, and he, uh, he was a Jew, and basically he was preaching to, to Jews. Now, I want to just get this uh, squared away right away. All through the Bible, salvation has always been available for every race. Don't, don't, ever, uh, don't ever doubt that. Some people falsely would say this. They would say that, well, in the Old Testament, you had to be a Jew to be saved. Uh, you didn't have to have Jewish blood in you. Uh, to be saved. You could be of any race. In fact, the amazing thing is that in the lineage of Christ or the ancestors of Christ um, that there were Gentiles that were in his lineage. They, they weren't all Jews. Even in fact, one, Rahab, she was a harlot. And, and even someone uh, that was a woman of ill repute was in the lineage and uh, uh, in the tree that came down to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, remember this. The only true Jew, the only true Jew, I don't know what's so funny, folks, but uh, would you sit up, sir, and, and I, I don't like the laughing and fooling around in church. This is church. I don't know what's going on, but it's inappropriate. And so I hate to have to say that in the midst of it. has been going on now for the last half hour, and I don't need it. Um, now, now the Bible, now the Bible is is very clear that uh, anybody, anybody can be saved. Anybody can be saved. Now, to be what you need to be is a spiritual Jew. You have to be that one that is grafted into the tree. You must be grafted into the tree. It has nothing to do with your uh, national origin. It has nothing to do with your ancestry. Salvation is of the Jews, and you must become a Jew in order to be saved. Now, it wasn't real clear. I'm a spiritual Jew. Only ones go to heaven are spiritual Jews. You have to remember that. It tells us that we could go. We won't go there today, but we could go to... Uh, uh, the book of Romans, especially in the ninth chapter, and we could look at other portions of Scripture that, that tell us very clearly uh, about the spiritual, uh, of, of what that those that are grafted into the trees. And it tells us there in the ninth of Romans about there are many Jews. In fact, they did. I remember in, in the book of John, remember Jesus came to the Pharisees, and they said that... Uh, that they were, a, they were, God was their father because Abraham was their father. Well, not necessarily so. To become a child of God, you must be a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing uh, uh, that as we read the Old Testament, now we're in Leviticus, and you that are reading through the Bible with us in a year, you're in Leviticus. And it tells all about these offerings. Now it's important to, to read those, but all of those sacrifices that were made in Leviticus, they were blood sacrifices. You know, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And it talks about the trespass offering and, and all these different things, and it seems to be quite involved. But all of that was ceremonial law, and what was it all about? That ceremonial law all pictured the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what it did. What shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It also told us in the book of Hebrews, uh, the, the blood of, of goats and, 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 uh, and cows and turtle doves and all that. Will that pay for our sins? No. But it only all it is is a picture uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is what we must uh, understand. But now here in the book of Acts chapter 10, it very clearly shows to you and I and to the world, to the people of that day and the people of, of this day, that salvation was for everybody. Not just for we uh, 
uh, not just for the Jewish people. And that's, that's what this sermon is all about. That's why Cornelius, uh, he was an Italian, and, and he was a devout man and one that feared God. And let me say this, in order to be saved, you have to be someone that is concerned and has a fear of God and, and a trust in God where you will turn from your sins. You see, Cornelius and his people, they sought after God. Now, some would differ with me. Uh, the, uh, the fatalist or the hyper-Calvinist, call it whatever you might want to call it, but they say that irresistible grace and, and that, that you can't do anything about it, that, that uh, if you're going to be saved, uh, God will save you. And, and, and uh, it, it says it's irresistible grace. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> The Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You're going to love your sin. You're going to love your dope. And you're going to love your wickedness and everything. And you love darkness. God ain't going to force himself on you. You're going to go to hell on your own part. They, uh, uh, the, uh, those of that persuasion, call them Calvinist, call them fatalist, call them whatever you want. They, they say that predestination means that there would be people in this auditorium that, that there's some that are ordained to go to heaven and some that are, are foreordained to go to hell and you can't do anything about it. You can't do something about it. You can believe and be saved. Amen. I, don't, I don't buy that stuff for a minute. Jesus died for the sins of the world. God's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in thine heart, God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh, that's what we have to do. You can be saved today. You might be far away from God. You might, uh, 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 you might be uh, 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 not, uh, you might have lived a life far from God and, and a life of sin. You might be an older. We have young people, we have old people here, younger people don't know that much about being far, far away from God, but they know they've sinned. They need to be saved. You know, that's the best testimony. I had a young person uh, many times have told me, oh, pastor, because we deal in rescue mission work, I deal with people that have come from a tough background, might have been in jail, might have been a drunkard, a doper, a prostitute, whatever. All different kind of people come to a rescue mission. And and a, and a young person sometimes tell me, oh, I heard their testimony, and, and I don't have a testimony like that. I got saved when I was six years old or eight years old or ten years old, and I, and I never took drugs, and I never smoked a cigarette, and I never lived a wicked life or anything. You've got the best testimony. That's the yeah. best testimony. The testimony that never tipped up a bottle of beer. The testimony that never had nicotine-stained fingers. The, 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 the testimony of someone that lived a pure life and now they weren't they weren't sinless of course because there's none sinless but but I tell you what the sooner you get saved and the younger you get saved the better off it is because I'll tell you something uh, a lot of folks they've got so much baggage on them when they get saved they got Amen. so much to get rid of and they can't amount uh, the best testimony is to get saved as a young person Amen. and I tell them that often and I'm glad that my children were were saved at a young age, and uh, and I I, I, I highly um, uh, recommend that. So here we have uh, Peter preaching this blockbuster sermon here in the uh, in the tenth chapter of the book of Acts, and uh, he made it very clear that salvation is for everybody. Get that straight in your mind. That there's there's no special doesn't matter who your doesn't matter where your ancestry is doesn't have to be Jewish doesn't matter who your your mother is or your father I had a mother and father that were uh, assemblies of God missionaries and that's great but that would that didn't save me and I didn't get saved when I was living in under their roof I could have I should have I heard the gospel. I used to sing the gospel songs up on the platform with my mom and dad as I was growing up in church. And so I had all of that. And I had grandmother and grandfather on both sides that, that loved God and were saved people. But you know what? Didn't do a thing for me, did it? I had to make my decision when? April the 4th. Yeah. 
19 and 69, the day uh, that I got born again. Now, so here was, was uh, uh, Peter was called, and he, and he had this sheet come down from heaven, and he had all this unclean food on there. Now, we were reading about, uh, in fact, we just read uh, today, uh, we were reading today in the Old Testament in Leviticus, talking about if, uh, if it, if it chews uh, like, a, 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 like the pig, the pig's got the right kind of foot, but it doesn't chew the cud. So you can't eat a pig. Jews couldn't eat a pig. Praise God, I can eat a pig. Thank God for pork chops, amen. You know, talking about pigs. The chicken, the chicken was talking to the pig and uh, the, uh, the chicken uh, said to the pig, said, you know, it's a marvelous thing. All over the world, uh, you and I are honored and uh, uh, we can be very proud of that, uh, that uh, uh, we've got uh, ham and eggs and it's all over the world, people eat ham and eggs. Yep. And the pig looked back at the chicken and frowned and said, yeah, but for you, it's an offering. For me, it's a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Ham and egg. You'll get that. Think about it a while. You'll get that a little later. <laughs> yeah. Meant more to the pig than it did to the chicken. Chicken laid an egg and laid some more. Praise God. And uh, but for the for the pig, it was. But thank God that we can uh, slaughter the pig uh, and we can eat it. And I like it. Eat anything. You can say, I can tell by looking at you, preacher. You take that literally, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I went to, I hadn't been there in a long time. I took my wife yesterday to the Duff's Smorgasbord. Anybody ever been to Duff's Smorgasbord? A number of folks been to Duff's Smorgasbord. Oh, it's good. Oh, they have everything there. I, 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 was, I was very controlled there yesterday. I did really good. I'm really proud of myself. And uh, I didn't overeat, and I went, and uh, and I had a big plate. Of, uh, my wife said, you probably shouldn't eat any uh, dessert. And I said, you're probably right, sweetheart. I ain't going to eat no dessert. And then she went to the bathroom. Now, see, I can talk about this because she's not here. She's saying this morning. I can tell all this, and, and she can't do anything about it. I hope maybe she's watching on the YouTube. She might get after me. But anyway, she went to the bathroom. She said, i got to go to the bathroom, honey, and we're going to go. Well, she come back from the from the bathroom and she come back and she had a little bit of uh, uh, tapioca pudding and a little bit of uh, chocolate pudding on in a little bowl. And so that opened the door for me, amen. <laughs> I said, well, honey, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go to the bathroom too like you did. And I'm going to check out that pudding. <laughs> and so she had a little bowl like this. Uh, I got that. I'm smarter than that. I got the, the, the meal plate, you know, big plate. Uh, how, how many of you get the meal plate when you go for the desserts? Do you do that? Joe does, yeah, I know that for sure. And uh, get the meal plate and go. I put various things on there that I thought I might like. But the truth of the matter is I, I, I had four four items on my plate with a nice little portion. And I told my wife, she said, oh, honey, you shouldn't have done that. I said, well, I said, this is just a sampler plate. This isn't, I'm not going to eat all this. And I didn't. I took a little bite of each one, and I, uh, I settled on, uh, on the banana pudding. And I ate the banana pudding, and I didn't eat the other three, which so I did pretty good. How on earth did I get talking about dust? Oh, you can eat anything. Yeah. And they got it all there, don't they? You know what the best thing was yesterday? I usually, I like fried chicken. I got a piece of that. But the, the fried fish, it was so light, it almost floating off the plate. I mean, it was, it was so good, that fried fish. And I ate plenty of fried fish. I didn't. And uh, there was a lot of other stuff. They, oh, they had them pork ribs, and they had all of that there. And I, I stayed away. But you can eat anything. Isn't that great? And uh, so they had ceremonial law in the Old Testament. We don't have any of that today. <coughs> Now you'd be better off if you ate healthy and just ate vegetables and drank milk and, and I guess milk ain't even that healthy to drink. I don't know, drink uh, carrot juice and water uh, or 
whatever. Do we have any vegetarians in here? And uh, you know, there's only five percent of America that's vegetarians. I'd like to be more than that. I guess the ones that are, they make a big show of it and they talk a lot. But only five percent of America are vegetarians. We don't even have any in here. None will admit it anyway. Um, but we can eat anything. Now, what was that a picture of? It was a picture to show that salvation was for everybody. Nothing unclean. No unclean meat. No unclean people. Now, in reality, remember this. It wasn't some preachers, I think, falsely say that God opened the door for Gentiles to be saved. That's not true because if you study the Bible carefully, all through the Old Testament, salvation has always been available. There were always proselytes that could come into Judaism and believe. So salvation has always been available for everybody. It hasn't been, it had nothing to do, it had to do with a belief, a belief in the Savior. When they made those sacrifices in the Old Testament, you could come in. You could be from another race. You could be one of those nations that they took over, they were fighting with, or whatever the case. But if they took on the religion of the Jews, and the religion of the Jews is belief in Jesus Christ, belief in the Messiah. We were talking a few days ago, remember where they were saying, be careful, in the end times there will be false messiahs. Yeah. And I was reading in the... Uh, uh, historical evidence of some of those things and things. I've been preaching for a number of years and they gave me some names of some people that even came to the Jews and said, they had a name of a certain guy, I should have wrote it down, I don't remember it right now, but they said that he claimed to be the Messiah, claimed to be Jesus, and he fooled a bunch of Jews and they followed him, And but he was a false Christ and, he, and there's been a lot of that and there might even be some today. Yeah. But there, all of the sacrifices and, and all of that in the Old Testament, it was to show uh, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ and that he would come and shed his blood on Calvary's cross. So here he, he called them and he said, uh, uh, they, this, this sheep came down and here came Peter to Cornelius and he sent his faithful band, those that were listening, and they came and they made a big mistake when Peter came. Did you see what we read about? What was a mistake? They bowed down to him. Don't, don't, don't bow down to any religious leader. I had a fellow one time. He was messing with me. I know that. He was Episcopalian. And Episcopalians taken over a lot of foolishness from Catholics. And, and he said that, uh, that the bishop from Orlando was coming into uh, Daytona Beach. And uh, when the bishop came, he was going to come to his Episcopalian church that, that he went to. Now, I don't know how. He told me he was saved, and he used to be a Baptist. And, and he told me that he goes to Episcopalian. Why on earth a saved Baptist would ever go to Episcopalian churches beyond me? It's like, it, it don't make no sense. But he claimed he was saved. And he says, but he used to light a, he used to try to pull my chain all the time. <laughs> Every time he'd... I'd, sometimes I'd take him in the car, and he was a disabled man, and uh, he used to come to the mission, and I did some things for him, and this and that, and and he was kind of a a, a friend of a friend. His his uh, his brother's a good Baptist man and a good friend of mine, and and sometimes I would be with him, and and every, every time he'd be in my car, and he'd go by a Catholic church or Episcopalian church, he'd make that sign of the cross. I don't know how to do it. That's the way you do it. I don't know how to do but. He'd do that. He just did it to pull my chain. He used to like to mess with me. And uh, I says, why are you doing that, man? He said, oh, yeah, you gotta, when you go by the church, you got to do that. And, and uh, he says, oh, the bishop's coming to my church. And he says, you know, you know what the wonderful thing is? If the bishop comes, what I'm hoping and I'm praying is that when he comes, he'll offer me his ring. What do you mean offer you his ring? Don't give you his ring? Oh, no, no. If he offers you the ring, it means he holds his hand out to you and then you kiss the ring. Oh, no. No, no, no. Take a gift to the pawn shop. I ain't kissing the, I ain't kissing the Pope's ring. I ain't kissing the Cardinal's ring. I ain't kissing the Bishop's ring. I'm not kissing him but his ring. And, and that, now, so what did, uh, what did he, what does Cornelius and his people do? They bow down to Peter. You see, there are no holy men. Don't say, oh, he's a holy man. Give him reverence. Oh, no. 
God, you know, God doesn't share His glory with anybody. You can do whatever you want, and they 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 bury these popes in pine uh, uh, coffins to show their humility. They don't look humble to me, riding around with all them big hats on in the Pope Mobile and listen to that. <laughs> Going around here, you ever see him? You ever see him shaking that smoke? Isn't that a oh, bunch yeah. of foolishness? Did you ever see that? They got them smoke it pots sense. and they shaking them pots yeah. and everything and they do it at the funeral and everything. That's religion. That's foolishness. You say, oh. That's blasphemy. No, what they're doing is blasphemy. What I'm saying ain't blasphemy. They're the blasphemers, not me. They're the ones saying that the Pope is the vicar of Christ and any decision he makes is uh, is in the place of Jesus Christ and he can change thing on this earth. I didn't know that. I was checking on that. Someone sent me some information in the mail, but and not in the mail, but on the, uh, in the in the in the in electronic mail in the, in the email, and uh, uh, it said that uh, there was it was like in the 1900s or some. They just made that. It was in the 1900s that it was made, or maybe the end of the 1800s, one of the two. But it wasn't that long ago. That they dec they declared that the Pope was infallible. That means that his decisions were as Christ, and they were like God. But did you know that a Pope has only made one decision for that? Only one. I didn't know that. I was reading it. They sent me the history of these cat, and, and and you know what it was? The decision he made. I think it might have been Pope Pius. I don't know. One of the popes. He said the the, the decision he made was that. The Lord uh, uh, that Mary was was taken from this earth to heaven bodily, and never happened. She died just like everybody else. She was just a, a, just a person. You might have been raised in the Catholic Church, and they say, "Hail Mary, Mother of God, yeah. full of grace and truth." And, and all of that. She wasn't the mother of God. She was a woman just like the women that we have in here. She was a good woman. She was the one that the that the Lord uh, was born uh, through here. But she wasn't sinless. She had other children. And certainly her body wasn't taken to heaven like that Pope said. That's the only act he's ever granted as the vicar of Christ and, and making that uh, 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 that uh, that's authoritative. No, what I said that to say this, you don't worship man, you don't worship a pope, you don't worship a preacher, you don't worship, just call me if you want to call me something, don't call me reverend. The only two times in the Bible where it says the reverence, it said it said we ought to reverence God and it says a wife ought to reverence her husband. That's the only time it says reverence in the Bible. Other than that, don't call me reverend. Call me pastor. Call me Brother Varga if you're a Christian and, uh, and, and that's it. But don't worship a man. That's a big problem we have. People follow men, and whether they be pastors or popes or cardinals or or whatever. But uh, Peter said, "No." Uh, uh, he said, "I'm just a man like you are." And then he preached this blockbuster sermon. I love the sermon. He went on, uh, and in the, in this sermon, and, and we'll we'll finish up with part of his sermon. Uh, and he said, and he says. Verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth, here's the preaching now, verse 34, 10, 34, Acts 10, 34, and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I like that, don't you? But in every nation that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. Well, isn't that great? Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of all. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You know, the Bible says that peace, God, the Lord said, Peace I give you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give I you. Aren't you glad? I've got peace in my life through Jesus Christ. He has brought peace and He has reconciled me to God. And through His precious blood, I have that peace. Verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him 
And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hung on a tree. God hath raised him up the third day and showed him openly the gospel, not all the people, but under witnesses chosen before God, verse 41, and even to us who did eat and drink with him after he was rolled, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify, that is, to which were ordained of God to be judge of the quick and the dead. Now look at verse 43. To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Isn't that wonderful? Through his name, all that believe. You don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to have a special family or all that. You don't have to be a special denomination. But all that believe, I'm a believer. Are you a believer today? That's the question. Have you believed? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What a wonderful Amen. thing. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and, while, and while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because at the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is to believe and be saved. What a wonderful thing. All right, that's the question now. We have here the proclamation to the world in this uh, Acts chapter 10 of salvation being readily available. To, it always had been, but this made it real clear to those in the New Testament and to you and I uh, uh, that are here that we can believe and be saved. Now listen to me. Have you believed and have you been saved? If you haven't, you can be saved even this very day. Let's bow our heads for prayer. You say, Pastor Varga, I'm 100% I'm sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm a saved person. No one looking around, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, I'm saved and I'm 100%.